Okay, well, let's get going, you guys. So today we're going to be out and about, uh, cruising around for a bit. Um, we'll talk about specifics in a, in a bit. Hopefully you guys watch those videos. If not, you should watch those videos tonight. Um, as a reminder, uh, because this lab is going to stretch over several weeks, rather than embedding the stuff for this particular, like this week's lab, in our regular module, I have another module that, that's multi-weeks. So, so it's there, um, but it's, it's just, it, the stuff won't be embedded in, in uh, next to the regular stuff that uh, our scoop it announcements and things of that nature. Okay, so that's that. So that's where you find that. So there's videos in there, there's resources, and there's an overview of the lab in there. And as we go on after spring break, there'll be more you know, additional stuff will show up in there. So just keep checking that bad boy. Okay, um, so we'll talk about logistics in a second, but I wanna make sure we're all on the same page. So what we're doing now for the next several weeks is we are looking at uh, a really uh, Im important part of conservation biology, and that is, that is fragmentation. And let's look and see how much fragmentation is happening right here today in our county and what the implications might be for, um, for wildlife and things of that nature, okay? Roads have all kinds of impacts, but the most conspicuous one is, is organisms can have a fatal interaction with a fast-moving vehicle, and that's what we're gonna be studying. So this is right here on, on, on out in the Oxnard Plain. This is um, an American badger, which if you, if you look at the California Natural Diversity Database, it says there's only 17 reported incidents of this organism in Ventura County since, or maybe it's another last couple years, but, but when we started this, there was only 17 from the 1970s to now noted. They are much more common than that. They're just cryptic, they're secretive, right? You don't typically see them. But roads kill things even if they only cross sometimes, right? So, so it's actually an, also an interesting way to get an insight into the type of diversity that we have and the organisms that we have in and around our county. Obviously, we'd like to get that without killing things, but nevertheless, there is some data in there and so while it's horrible that we have a poor critter dead here, we at least know that there was a mom and a dad that you know, were viable enough to, to have offspring, et cetera, to create these, these animals. Okay. So roads are super, super ubiquitous in, uh, in our planet, <clears throat> but, it's, but in the U.S. as well. And so this is a figure from a paper from several years ago now, but, but um, I think it's important. So what we're showing you on the x-axis is the distance in, in, for the lower 48 states of the, the entire United States of America, the distance from a road. Uh, and this is a major road. This isn't every teeny tiny little hiking trail or whatever. This is just major, uh, you know, significant roads. And on the y-axis, we have the... Um, the y-axis is, is the land area, the percent of land area. So how we read this is we say, hey, okay, so here's 2,000 meters, two kilometers from a road, right? Here's 1,000 kilometers from a road. And if I just kind of bloop, 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 shoot up here, it looks to be a little, just about 80-ish 80, 80 percent. So take a breath. 80 percent of all the land in our country is within one kilometer of a road, right? And if we talk about a little bit farther, like let's say like two kilometers from a road, right? That's like, that's well north of 90% of our land is next to a road. Roads are ubiquitous. They're a defining aspect of our culture. They're a defining way we interact with the natural world and, and the and impacts that we have on the natural world. So that's super, that's a, this is a super crazy figure in my uh, perception. Uh, this came out a few years ago. So this is a map of the United States. It's actually not a map of the United States. It's a map of the roads in the United States. It looks like we've mapped stuff, right? It looks like we can see the sort of mountains of the Southern California area. We can see the, the, the Continental Divide and all that kind of stuff. All that is, is is our road segments visualized up there. So they are so <laughs> ubiquitous. They track with the type of development we do, the type of, of infrastructure we put in, et cetera. So roads are ubiquitous. In our own county, um, you know, this is typically how we think about it. Uh, we, we say, hey, like, what, what's going on with Ventura County? We might grab a map like this that sort of says, oh, we have some mountains over here, and we have some, some valleys over here, and all, right, it looks very pretty, it's nice and green, right? Um, 
if we overlay the roads, this is what we see. So this is what's known as kriging. This means to put a little bit of buffer around a particular object or shape. And so um, right here, the yellow is the area within 100 meters of a road, okay? And the, and the darker orange is the area within 500 meters of a road. And what's the pattern you guys see? There's a lot of effing roads. There's a lot of effing roads, especially in the southern part of the county, right? In the northern part where we're in the national forest, fewer roads, okay? Sure. But where we live and work and, and, and farm and all that kind of stuff, essentially almost the entirety of, the, of that part of the county is within 500 meters of a road. So this is a real challenge for uh, terrestrial critters, for birds, for uh, things looking to get water, for things looking to get a mate, for things looking to get food, for things running away from a predator. This is a defining aspect of our society. We, we started this lab um, many years ago when I had slightly more hair. Um, and I was driving down Potrero Row, which we'll drive on in a few minutes. And uh, I saw this pregnant coyote and I was, I was, there was just me and another guy. We were, we were like the whole department at the time, right? So we've gotten bigger now. But, um, but so I, I would teach all day long and go home late. And, and this was in the springtime and I was going home and I was driving up and every evening about five, six o'clock or maybe like six, seven, whenever it was I go home, I saw this uh, several times, like five or six times over the previous month, a mom, w pregnant coyote walking across Petrero, cruising, 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 cruising across. And then um, when I was driving home one day, I saw this and you can't really see it too well in the light in this room, but that's, she was killed. She was killed by a car, right? And that got me thinking like, oh my God, right in front of school, like we should, we should do something. And that led to this project that you guys are going to be a part of. So you should be, this is a really cool thing. So we're going to get some data. You guys can get insights into roadkill, but you're actually adding to a long-term database that we've created that helps us understand, helps, uh, you know, agencies, helps county government, helps uh, uh, advocates understand what the roadkill is like. So the stuff you're doing is actually a help. It's not just doing a, a mindless lab activity you are helping us understand and therefore helping us move to a better solution and resolving some of these problems. Cool? The, the overriding thing that's gonna drive this lab, you, what you guys will work on producing in a few weeks when we're done with this, is what is the current rate of animal kills in the Santa Monica Mountains and then overall Ventura County, right? So we're gonna estimate that. We're gonna take a bunch of samples, we're gonna have replicates, and then we're gonna estimate how many critters are killed on our roads, or, or at, least, at least critters over the last, uh, you know, last month or, so, or over the next month, how many will be killed, okay? So that's, that's why we're doing this. Um, roads have all kinds of impacts, um, but, but one example here is we see on the very first, so, so P22 just died, the famous P22 just, just uh, was hit by a car and, and finally died. Um, uh, uh, three months ago. I don't know this for a fact, but the mountain lion that was on campus that was causing all the issues probably was the one that was killed two weeks ago on PCH. Um, I don't know for sure. It was uncollared. That one was uncollared. The one that was killed on PCH was uncollared. A few weeks before that, another one had been s struck on PCH and killed in, in roughly a similar spot. These are the radio collar tracks from the first four mountain lines that our colleagues in the National Park Service tagged um, starting about 20 years ago here in and around the Santa Monica Mountains. And what you see is, what you see is, there's some, there's, so, so this, this is, so this blue would be all the area in which that animal roamed after, you know, over many, many months, right? So that's, a, that's a, you can think of it as, as its territory. This pink one, um, right here, right? Probably a female, right? right here. But then look at the two in the Santa Monica Mountains. They don't move. They're, they're, they're really only in the Santa Monica Mountains. In fact, we essentially have boxed in the Santa Monica Mountains. We've defined it by the Oxnard Plain and Lewis Road and, and, and you know, roads right here by campus over here. 
Over here, we have the Sepulveda Pass in, in, in Santa Monica and, and all that good stuff. So this is Sepulveda Pass 405. This is PCH, obviously it's the ocean. The mountain lions aren't probably going to go surf because they're not that cool. Um, and then, uh, but then the 101 is this big, huge barrier, right? So in effect, roads have acted something like a wall, right? Either you're going to get killed or if you try to avoid it, you are, you are hemmed in. So that's a real barrier. And so we're going to look at, some, some of us will be surveying other areas of, of the county, um, but the majority of our surveys will be concentrated in and around the Santa Monica Mountains to try to get an estimate of this. How many critters are uh, being whacked? And so what we're going to do is you all have been assigned different segments of road. Um, and we're in groups, so we do this in teams, right? It's not, in, in, it's not an individual activity, but, but we'll talk about all that in a bit. But, but the big idea, the, the mile high picture, is that we are looking at, at road segments. So everything that we're going to be surveying has a starting point and has an ending point. So we're going to go up to that starting point, reset our, our, our odometer to zero, 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 and then drive it. And if we see a kill, we're going to say, oh, the what, what's the mile? The kill is at 2.1 miles. We're going to note that, right? Theoretically, we could use GPS devices and stuff, but that gets a little more complicated when we're driving, and sometimes we see it and we're not next to it. So, so long story short, this is, this is a, a, a good way to do it, right? Less technology, more pay attention to the road, um, and it works well. And so um, when we get into this, you'll see that, uh, so in this case, uh, Decker Canyon starts at PCH and goes this way. Uh, Latigo Canyon also starts at PCH and goes that way. And so, so we are going to define these areas. We are not dropping points. So mostly how people that, most of the data out there for roadkill, someone sees, sees a deer and they call someone, they report it, and they go, ah, here's a deer, right? That's useful. That's a helpful thing. But all that tells us is a deer died here. What, remember what I just said a, minute, a couple minutes ago? What, what, what's the goal of this? What are we trying to estimate here? Roadkill over, like in our area, right? So how many kills, p kills per month, let's say. <coughs> so if, I, if all I had was a data, a, a, a cloud of data points, right? That'd be cool. That would tell me where the roadkill was happening. But did I do, was that you and I going out to dinner and we happened to see one? And so we, we commented one time? Or was that you and I driving 365 days of the year and see it and see one kill one time, right? That's a very different interpretation. Are you guys with me? And so what we're doing is we're not so much focusing on the exact point, you are going to record that, but we're interested in doing a transect. So just as important for us on, let's say, Latigo Canyon Road, you know, it's important to know there were three dead critters on that road when we, when we did this survey today, let's say. But it's also super, super important to know that we do it tomorrow or next week that there's zero kills, right? And the next survey, that there's only one kill. And then we can average the kill rate per that mile of road, and then we can multiply that for how many miles of road we get and get an estimate. You guys with me? So points are helpful. The location is a useful thing, but we are doing kill rates. We are doing how many individuals over this defined length of road. That's our goal, okay? That's why we're going to a particular starting point every time, resetting the odometer and going. Okay. Um, so you're assigned to groups. We'll go over those in a second, but everybody's assigned in a group of three to four people. You don't do a survey by yourself. You do it with at least one other person in the car. You can do it with everybody in the car. That's cool, right? You guys are going to decide amongst yourselves how you want to do that. If you're going to say, hey, the, the two of us will do the first couple, and then you two do the next couple, <laughs> or I'm going to split up and do these two roads, and you do the, whatever it is, right? So it's, it's up to you guys. And we all have different work situations and living situations, so, so that's for you guys to arrange. But not everybody has to go out on every single survey on every single day on every single site. Cool? We just, your group is responsible for getting it, but you guys can decide how you want to fairly divide up the work, okay? All right, um, we're gonna do two things. Firstly, we're gonna count the number of dead things, right, that we see. And so we'll have some data sheets and we'll drive around. Here's an example, and this is one you guys all have in front of you. This is an example of, of a, a, a sheet that you'll have and you'll, you'll, you'll do a segment and you're gonna say, oh, I started this time, this is the, here's the date, 
um, uh, this is where I, I surveyed. And, um, and note we have road and road segment. So for most of you, that's going to be the same thing. But for some of us, like the folks doing the 126, we have a lower 126 and an upper 126. So, so just, just be aware of that. We have the road and the road segment. Okay. Um, and the road segment always reads from the start to the end. So in this case, Agura to PCH. Okay. And then um, we have different categories. And we'll go over this when we're outside. We have different categories. Um, the ones I have here on your default spreadsheet are the most common things you will see. You will see other things. You will see other things. I would just put that in the other column, right? If so, if it's a snake, a squirrel, striped skunk, rabbit, possum, da 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 da, da right? Um, if it was something else, I'll just say other. And then in the comments, I would describe what it was, right? So in the data sheet, we actually have many, many columns. You know, so if, if uh, you know, red winged blackbird doesn't show up on here, but if you see a red winged blackbird, you can, you can enter that in the column, okay? We also have these guys right here, right here. And so these are gonna be a large chunk of your stuff. So unknown big, unknown medium, unknown small. What that means is I was going too fast, I couldn't identify it. Or it was too smushed by a car, you couldn't tell what it was, right? So I, we know that was an animal, we know that that was a roadkill, but we can't get it to species or group or whatever, right? So that's what that's for. What is big? Big is coyote, deer, mountain lion size thing, okay? What is small? Small is little dudes, like small is loaf of bread-ish and smaller. So rabbit. Um, uh, uh, mouse, um, you know, those kinds of things. If it ain't small and it ain't large, it's medium. So what's medium? Medium is a raccoon, a skunk, uh, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Bobcat, that kind of stuff. Okay? <laughs> we also have an unknown small bird because most of you guys probably don't know your birds and, and that's totally cool. But I can tell it's a bird. It had feathers, so I know it was a bird, but I, you know, whatever. And then there are a few more categories than this, but, but this will get us going, right? And this is enough that if it's an other, just let me know, okay? Now, we're, this whole thing, and we'll talk about this when we get outside and go through our safety stuff, we are, you are not stopping with it for everything, right? Seeing it in the side of the road, you know, driving, driving you know, below the speed limit, but seeing something on the road, you do not need to stop. In fact, most places are not gonna be safe for you to stop, so I do not want you to stop. If you did see a mountain lion, and it was safe to stop, I would think maybe stop and take a picture of the mountain lion, right? Um, but, but, you know, if it's safe to stop and there's something really interesting, you can stop. But generally speaking, you are not expected to submit photos. You're not expected to stop and do a real detailed inspection of what that, what's that bird species, right? We're, these are driving transects, okay? You're also only going to do this in daylight hours, only when it's non-foggy, only when it's non-rainy, right? We're not doing this. Anything is not... The, I mean, night is just harder to see, but, but you know, this is only safe time of driving, right? Only safe time of driving, only safe time of driving. We're going below the speed limit. Nobody's doing anything heroic. We're just, we're just driving, right? The drive, and the reason why we're having at least more than, at least two people in the car is the driver is driving. The only thing the driver's doing, resetting the odometer and driving safely. And the passenger, I mean, the driver's looking too, but, but the passenger's looking, the passenger sees something, hey, what's the mileage? The driver can glance down and say it's 11.2. That's it, right? The driver doesn't have anything in his or her hands, not playing on the phone, not distracted driving. They're just driving safely. So we have a recorder, at least one recorder in the car, to be the safe person to recording the data. So that's real important, okay? All right. So this is the, this is the kill stuff. Also, um, what you're going to do, so we're, we're, dri we're driving and we're doing, doing a, a, a kill survey. At some point, at a convenient spot, we're gonna stop. Um, now you can do this at another time, but it usually is best to just do it while you're driving, at least it's the most efficient use of your time. Um, oh yeah, I just say that, yeah, so everything has, everything has, um, uh, so I've grouped the transects so they're generally together. So I didn't put somebody in Ventura <laughs> and somebody on in, you know, East County, something like that, so, so there, there's a group. Some of us have one road, some of us have two or three, it's try to be, I try to be balanced. So, 
So if you have one road, it's a long road, right? Whereas if you have three, they're, they're, they're shorter segments of roads. Okay, the other thing you're gonna do, so we're gonna count the number of dead things on the road, and then at some point, at a safe place where we can pull off the road, let me be clear, not, not parked halfway off the shelter or something, but a safe turnout. So that could be in a, you know, at an, um, where another road is intersecting it, it could be a little overlook, you know, somewhere safe where you're fully off the road, right? So pull off, and, and um, what you're gonna do is we're gonna count the vehicles. Count the vehicles for 15 minutes. So that's gonna give us an estimate of the traffic, you know, the, the, the vehicle movement rate, which is the possible kill source for these critters, okay? Again, we'll go over that when we're outside in a minute. So we're doing those two things. We're counting the number of cars on that road, and we're counting the number of uh, dead things we see. And then, when you're done, you're gonna type it into this big, massive database we have. In fact, I'll, I'll just make it simple so you, you don't have to see the whole database at first. But, but um, and so then you guys are just gonna enter the data. And that's it, okay? You're gonna do the first survey by Sunday. And that's just to make sure that we work out the kinks and there's no problems. But after that, you have um, uh, three and a half weeks or so to do four surveys. So you have plenty of time. Four total. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. But 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 four is the is the, what you guys are shooting to get. Um, so that and, and that's it. And then and then once we pull this together, we will we will as a group, as with all our stuff, use everybody's data for our write-ups and stuff later in a couple weeks. Cool. Make sense? Overview makes sense. Okay, great.